Hey guys, welcome to today's video. This is going to be a quick version and this is Paint with Lovejoy. Thanks so much for joining. Please subscribe to the channel and share this channel with your community. Like I said earlier, this is going to be a quick version. So if you prefer the full length, non time lapsed version, check out my Patreon page and my Paint with Lovejoy website. If you want to further support Paint with Lovejoy, please do. It all helps. And for more in-depth courses, check out paintwithlovejoy.com. And as always, share this with your community. All right, guys, this is going to be another fun painting. This is the time-lapsed version. If you would like the real-time, uh, slower version, check out my patron page or my website, Paint with Lovejoy. And as always, make sure you take your progress photos. Today's painting, we're going to split it in two. We're going to do the sky, so we're going to put a horizon line on there with light blue. Then we're going to fill that space in with light blue and then a little bit darker blue towards the top of the canvas. Now, if you are using student grade paint, I do recommend that you apply it a little bit thicker and that will help with your coverage and with your blending. And here you can see where we slap that darker blue, the direct blue on top and then blend it into the um, light blue. We're going to do the same thing below that horizon line with light green, filling up that entire space and then adding some darker green on top of that. And like I said, I do recommend that you apply your paint a little bit thicker and that will help with the blending. I also want you to trust your instincts. Um, pause the video as needed or check out the full uh, length version in the other websites. Um, but kind of find your creative regular outlets. It is really healthy to have a weekly creative um, relaxing time. So find them as often as possible. So here you can see where we slap that green on there, doing that same wet on wet blending. We're going to do the same thing with a little bit of white. And again, trust your instincts and kind of get this to where you like it. Uh, we will be letting this dry and then we're going to put a mountain on that horizon line and then we will uh, put some kind of bushes and grassy uh, collections of foliage uh, on top of here. So now we're moving down to a medium flat brush. We're going to put that uh, mountain on there and if you feel like switching out colors, you want purple or blue or gray or different colored mountain, feel free to switch it out. I am applying this paint a little bit thicker and if you notice I am holding that brush at a, like a 45 degree angle to help that thicker paint go on there a little bit smoother. If you happen to have a lot of brush strokes that show up in your painting, embrace that. I actually personally like expressive brush strokes, but if you do want something to be a little bit smoother, hold that brush at that 45 degree angle. And here we're just adding some of the foliage that's going to be in the distance. Um, and then we're going to clean the brush. I do recommend letting all of this dry. And everywhere we're going to put the California poppies, we're going to put a base color of white on there. And this does two things. Um, this gives us a nice kind of neutral color to put the orange on top of it, so the orange will be brighter. And it also allows uh, for the background to not have that shine through because I am using student grade paint and it does happen to be on the transparent side. And there's a few other videos on my YouTube channel that I'll implement this um, kind of masking method where we put the white down first and then we'll put a color on top of it. So as you're putting the white on there, you do want it to be the shape of the poppies. Um, in the foreground and then when we get towards the horizon line it's just going to be kind of like a blob or a space uh, that will put the orange color on top of this. And again if you're inclined to put more flowers on here than I do go right ahead and do that. Just go ahead and do that now uh, with the white so you can lay that in there and then we can put the orange on top. Alright you guys are doing good. Remember to breathe and do not paint as fast as this video. So for our orange, I'm making my own orange, starting with that yellow, adding a little bit of uh, red to get to the shade of orange that I want. If you already have acrylic paint in the orange color that you like, feel free to use that directly. And we are going to fill in all those spaces where we put the white paint. And I did let it dry before I put the uh, orange color on top of this. But everywhere we put that white, we're going to be putting this light orange. And then we're going to go in with a bit darker orange by adding a little more red. And then we'll go in with a little bit lighter with that direct yellow and then even some white for some highlights. If you find that your brush is shaky as you are going to do this, that does mean you're holding your breath. So if you exhale as you touch the brush to the canvas, it will make it a little bit easier. 
and it is okay if you overlap some of the mountain or that grassy area. Um, I actually did visit the California, the poppy fields up by Lake Elsner when there was a super bloom and it was gorgeous. There was so much orange everywhere. So feel free to add more orange than I put in this painting. Trust your instincts for that. Again, filling in those poppies that are a little bit bigger um, in the foreground towards the bottom of the canvas and then moving into that red orange. All that means is adding a little bit more red to that orange mixture. And the poppies that are closest, that orange, that darker color is going on the bottom. And then it's just going to go in a few random spaces in the blob towards the horizon line. And it's kind of nice to just call flowers blobs. I do that in a lot of my videos. Now we're going with the yellow. Um, and that's again for the close up poppies. We're putting that on the top and we will repeat this with a little bit of white. And what we're doing is putting a highlight on the top. That's where the sun hits it first. And then the shadow would be at the base of the flower where it's kind of all collecting and coming out of the stem. And here we're going to use that green to add the stems and some grass. Um, and you can use that middle flat brush or the small pointy brush. And whichever brush that you're using, play with the pressure of your brush. Light pressure creates a smaller line. A little more pressure is going to create a wider line. And you can do this with that middle flat brush or the small pointy brush. And then we're also putting uh, like blades of grass in here. And I would actually recommend putting more blades of grass um, in your painting than I did on mine. Sometimes when I do finish a painting, I look back and go, oh, you know what? I would change this. I would do this differently. Um, so I get to kind of relay that to you guys at home so you can add what I did not add. And that's also part of the painting process. Um, the more that you paint, the more you get comfortable with the process, more comfortable with your own skills. And you can look back and go, you know, I would change this. I would do this differently. And then you take that into your next painting. So that's why I say painting's never really about being perfect, but just kind of having fun and learning with each uh, painting that you do. So again, add more grass, add anything else that you want to your painting. Uh, we are going with a little bit of yellow right here, uh, some more highlights in that background um, where all those orange poppy flowers are. Um, it is dry already, so we're just placing that yellow right on top of it. So thanks for joining for this quick painting. And I look forward to painting with you in the future. Cheers.